Good morning. Today we are going to look at what I think is the most important Gutenberg block. If you look on your screens now, you'll see the type of sites you can build with it because it lets you dynamically query your websites to create wonderful blog pages, archive pages, and potentially in the future, WooCommerce pages. Let's get into it. Block of the week, block of the week. Yeah, block of the week. Which block is it going to be? Well, you will have to stick around, my friend, and maybe you will see. It's block time. To give this video some context, I'm going to show you how you can use the query loop block to do three things. The first one is to create an awesome blog page looking a bit like this, where we've got a featured post at the top with a big image. And then as we scroll down, we've got our other posts underneath with the featured image and the post except. The second example is how to use the query loop block to create a lovely masonry grid layout for your blog pages or archive pages. And the third example is to give you a glimpse of what might be possible at some point in the future, and that is using the query loop block to create WooCommerce pages. So let's get into it. So if you want to test this out for yourselves, you are gonna need at the moment a full site editing theme, and you're also gonna need the Gutenberg plugin installed. If you want to learn more about full site editing, then I've done a beginner's guide and I'll put a link to it up here for you. But let's just add the query loop block and I'll just talk you through the main settings on it. So I'm just gonna search, search for query loop. Now I'm building a custom a featured post page template here. Uh, and here's the query loop block, so I'm going to add it into my page. Now when you first add it, you've got different ways, you've got different sort of layouts you can choose for it. Let me just close this down um, so we can see this. Uh, I would recommend you just click on these little arrows here because this is going to show you very quickly the different layout options that you've got. So you, you can see how it's pulling the posts in dynamically here, but we've got different layouts. So there's our sort of masonry layout uh, and you'll see the one I actually want is this one to start with because I just want a one big featured image and then I want my sort of post title over on the right and my excerpt over on the right. So that's the one I'm gonna actually choose. So I, I click choose. There's this other option where you can start blank, which again does give you actually some different options. I'm just gonna choose choose. So I choose choose, that pops it into the page. Now you'll see some options down here or well, they might appear up here, but this is kind of extra options. So these are really important. So let me just talk you through these. This one here is very important. That's how many items per page. So the effect we're actually going for, if I just go back to my uh, example here, we want one big featured post at the top, and then we've got another query loop block underneath pulling in different posts. Okay, so let me just go back to that one. So essentially all I want is one item to page, one item per page, and then over here on the right, I can actually click into these. Actually, before I do that, let me just show you the actual breakdown of these. Can you see this is the query loop block itself? Within that, we've got the post template block. Within that, we've actually got two columns and we've got a post featured image block. These are all blocks, remember. Then the post title block and the post excerpt block, all just blocks. If I wanted to rearrange these, I can just drag and change the order. So I can lay these out any way I like, so it's super cool. All I really want to do at the moment for these is change the color of this. So I'm gonna change the text color and the link color. And I'm also gonna change the text color here and the link color for the excerpt. You can also write down here, which is kind of cool, your own read more text. So you can put whatever you like in there, okay? So that's kind of where I'm at. Okay, now that's the template, remember, that's not the actual page. So what I need to do, or you would need to do, is just to go off and create a page, which I'm gonna do now. So I just need to create a page that uses that brand new page template that I've just set up. So I'm gonna call this page my lovely new blog page. Okay, and then what we need to make sure is over here on the right, it's actually using this template, which is the template. If I flick back here, you see the template up here is called Featured Post News Page. Featured Post News Page. And that now, I won't put any content in that page because it's going to automatically just bring in that layout essentially. Okay, so the page is using the page template that I've just customized. Right, next up, we're going to add some posts underneath it. Right, so it's time to add some posts underneath it and also to show you one other cool thing because you can actually filter the posts by category and other cool things as well. So I'm gonna add another query loop block into my page. Basically, I'm running another query. Here we go, and we go through the same process again. And again, I get a different, you know, I get the same thing where I can choose uh, what layouts I want for my, for my blocks to come in. And I can also say how many blocks I want. So this is actually the layout I want. I want a sort of standard grid. You'll see it's missing the featured image, but I'm gonna show you how you can add that afterwards, which is which will show you another really cool thing about the query loop block. So I'm gonna choose that. 
that's going to dynamically bring in those posts to that page. Now you will notice, hopefully, a couple of problems we've got. One, the colors are wrong. Two, we're missing the featured images. Three, we've got a duplication. We've got winter, winter clothes and we've got winter clothes here. So there is a setting, which I'm going to show you now, which is this little option here, which is offset. What that means is you can offset this block to basically skip over a number of posts. Now we only want it to skip off one post, skip over one post, and that means it won't bring in this post. It's going to basically skip over that post and bring in the next post. So that's that's really cool when you're when you're using uh, multiple multiple blocks in your pages. You're going to need to use the offset, and again, it's just make sure you select here the query loop block to see the settings. Because again, if you're down here you won't see the settings. So just make sure in the list view, you're selecting the top level query loop block and then it's this little option here. Uh, that's how many, you know, how many items per page and the offset, very, very important. Right, the other thing we need to do with this is just a bit of tidying up in terms of uh, the colors, which I'll do really quickly. Uh, now, when you change it in one section here, it's gonna change it for all of them. You see how they're all changing which is another nice feature built into the query loop block. So let's just change the text color. And again, you can customize the uh, read more text if you want to. You can just write whatever you like. Right, a few other things to show you. The next is we actually want a little featured image in here as well. Now, where we put this is up to us. You see there's, just make sure you select the query loop block. And I'm just gonna add it here to start with. And again, if you add it into one, it's going to add it into all. There it is, the post featured image block. And that's just going to bring that in. Isn't that so cool? And if you wanted that above it, you could just drag it above it. So you can see how easy it is to play around with these things. Now, if I select the query loop block over here, I just want to show you one other thing. You've got some options in terms of the type of content you pull in. So you've got post pages or products. We'll come back to products when we look at WooCommerce. You can also change the number of columns here just with this little slider here so you can play around with that I think I'm happy with three although look two looks pretty cool uh, you can order it newest to oldest you can choose to exclude sticky posts you can also filter by category and tags and author and keywords I'm not quite sure how keywords works or whether it works at the moment I'm happy with that so I'm just going to save my template now remember I just need to go back to my page here reload it and we should have now our fantastic new blog page how cool is that and if you want to edit any of this stuff you just go back to the template so if I want to reduce this text size for example let's make it really small just go back to the template and edit the template and then whenever that has been used you know you're editing the page template that's what's so incredibly powerful um, about this this block that you can just edit you can basically create your own custom templates now Great stuff. So, so that's the uh, featured post layout. I want to show you next the masonry layout because that's a cool example. Right, here's this really lovely masonry grid layout where the it's like a brick work essentially. That's why it's called masonry. And as I scroll down, you'll see it's just pulling in our posts in this lovely layout. There's a couple of things I want to show you here. We're just using the query loop block again to construct this page. So rather than building this from scratch, I'm going to deconstruct the page from the inside out, if you see what I mean. So here is the page in the template view. And the important stuff is all on the left here. This is the list view. And you can see it's been constructed in pretty much the same way as the other page. We've just got a few different options in here. So we start with a columns. So it's essentially two columns, which is how we got our two columns. And then we put a separate query loop block in, in into each into each column. Okay, and uh, so here's the first query loop block. And if we look at our little settings down here, you'll see we've just set it to display four items per page and then it, and then we've just basically created these as we normally would. So if we didn't want the featured image, we could delete the featured image block. If we wanted the post title to go above that one, we could just, you know, we could do all sorts of stuff to this. In fact, let's do this on this one as well. Let's move the post title above the featured image on both columns. And you see how I'm editing both columns because we've got two query loop blocks going on here. Now the really, I guess the important thing to note here is this second query loop block. To get this to work, the offset's absolutely essential. Okay, and here we go, if we open this up, can you see this is set four items per page? But the key thing, the most important thing is you set this to the value of posts that you have in this page. So it won't basically show the same post in each column. You'll see if I, if I change this to naught, can you see how it's showing exactly the same post in both columns because we're just using two query loop blocks. 
So you just need to make sure whatever you've set in this first column, as in number of posts, you also set it in the second column. And that's it essentially. That will then create this lovely masonry layout. And you'll see when I reload this page, uh, if this is saved, let me just check that has saved, that our post titles now, see how the post titles are now above the photos. Okay, if you want them back beneath the photos, you can literally just drag them in the list view over here so they're below the featured images. Save your template. This is so cool. Save your template, go back to the page that you're actually using that template on, and there we go. I have also found something really useful because <laughs> there's this been new feature that's been added, which is this duotone, du duotone filter, which I've never really found the use for when I've been creating WordPress websites. It is actually pretty cool when you're creating these custom post pages because you can apply these filters, like let's say you want all your images to have the same sort of color treatment. Well, you can actually just do it here. So if I just click on my featured image block and give them both this sort of, in this case, this orangey feel, can you see how they're all changing? So you don't have to go into each image and apply a filter to it. You can just do it in the template and then you get this nice, you know, this lovely consistency of image for your brand. I think that's a really cool, I've never really understood why the duotone filter was there. It kind of makes sense now. So at the moment, I'm just going through and making these black and white. So all the images now have this kind of cool black and white look. So rather than having to edit them at source, I can edit them in the template. So I think that's a really cool thing. Right, the final and third thing I want to show you today is the potential of how in the future we're going to be able to use the query loop block for WooCommerce pages. Right, to finish, here is a glimpse of the future and potentially you're gonna be able to use the query loop block for things like WooCommerce pages and potentially for custom post types as well because already with, with it here, if I click on the query loop block and then come over here, you'll see there's this post type. We've got three options, post page or product. So if I select product, product, that's actually dynamically pulling these products into this page for me. These are all WooCommerce products. It's missing a few things. So it's missing a price and it's missing things like the buy now button. I've added it as a link here. But again, it's just using the query loop block uh, to bring these in. So this, this is really, really exciting. So we're gonna be able to really customize in the future um, our WooCommerce pages. And we're also um, starting to integrate our Woo Builder Blocks plugin into full site editing. And Woo Builder Blocks, for those that don't know, lets you customize the WooCommerce product page using Gutenberg. And soon we're gonna have a really cool demo that lets you use it to create custom templates for your product pages. So there's a first proper look at the really exciting query loop block. I hope you found the video useful. If you did, if you can give it a thumbs up, that would be amazing because it really helps spread the word. And if you wanna see more and more Gutenberg tutorials, hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much and I'll see you soon.